What is up everyone? It's Jimmy Gems over here and I'm currently in Nashville, Tennessee and welcome to the first ever Gear Talk vlog. If you guys don't know anything about me, it's all good. I'm just a session guitarist and music producer from Sydney, Australia and I'm currently living in Nashville, Tennessee. Being in Nashville, Tennessee, I am surrounded by such amazing gear as you can see, all these amazing amps right behind me. And I'm currently at a store called Carter's Vintage Guitars. As you can see this place has amazing gear and there is the store out there with all that gear. Anyways, come follow me for this vlog as we are going to explore this place and even interview some amazing musicians who are currently about to be on tour as I give them an interview and give them a little bit of a gear rundown of what it is that they're using. So, let's go! Anyways, it's time to leave Carter's Vintage Guitars and let's drive up to Soundcheck Studios where I meet up with Michael W. Smith's band and we'll check out the gear that they're using for their upcoming tour. What is up? We are here with the man of the hour, Mr. Michael W. Smith himself. Thank you. Michael, can you please tell us what is happening in this rehearsal and what you're doing this rehearsal for? Well, we are doing the 35 Years of French tour and um, pulling a lot of these songs out of the closet. We're dusting them off. Go Wish Young Man being one of those, which I haven't played in two decades. Wow. Um, yeah, so it's just, it's a blast. And so I've never done this before in my whole career. My whole career. I've never had a... a a set list this long and um, it's everybody's pretty excited I mean it's, this is it's really, really exciting. it's really gonna be fun and you sort of kind of get the update set things production wise a bit but it's vintage it's vintage MW I guess vintage you know? MW with real musicians and with lots real... of with lots of crazy changes that's awesome yes the, the 80s and the 90s and guitar solos big guitar oh, solos Stu G, Stu G doing the guitar Stu G doing the guitar solo <laughs> right there yep yeah so can you tell us a bit of the keys you're playing and what you're running. Well, you know, I'm, I'm pretty, I love this little new Yamaha. I've got actually got this guy in the studio. This is the new, the new guy that Yamaha's released right there and um, CP88. But I'm basically triggering, honestly, um, a sweet, sweet patch on my Apple computer. Um, to sort of kind of get that sound that's going to cut through because a lot of stuff's really pop. If I was doing a Christmas show, I would um, I you know, I'd be playing a real grand. You know, I'd be playing something, or if I had to trigger something, I'd be playing something a lot more warmer. You know, it's just when you know, I'm playing piano with a 65 piece orchestra, it's a different thing. But this pop thing, it's got to cut. And so we've got the sweet, sweet little uh, moment on the apple over there that really, it's incredible. So. But I love Yamaha. I've been with Yamaha for a long time. They've been really good to me. And they just make great stuff. And this guy actually, uh, in my studio, it actually sounds amazing. What, what I love about this, you've got a grand piano sound, but you got to kind of got the upright. If, if you want to go the keen route, you know, do a little, get a little vibe with the upright. It's incredible. And then there's the CP guy. We got a layered piano. Look at that. But, um, but it's kind of fun, you know. Just um, yeah, this, this Yamaha just continues to kind of come up with all kinds of cool stuff, and yeah. But uh, yeah, well, there's a lot of Yamaha gear on stage. Yes, and we're excited. Awesome, thank you very much, you Mr. Michael it. W. Smith. You got it. So here I am with Stu G himself. He is playing guitar for Michael W. Smith's tour. And we are going to do a gear run through of Stu's rig. So, Stu, All right. let's start off with your guitar, shall we? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, one of the main guitars I'm using is this uh, Sir S, HSS setup for that kind of 80s and 90s Smitty vibe. Uh, really good. 
for that and those Dan Huff solos. It's gonna be dive bombing all night, I'm guessing. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then uh, another guitar I'm using is my Duesenberg Star TV player. This is one of the Delirious guitars that I had back in the day. I still love this guitar and uh, yeah, I love its versatility actually and the fact that it kind of really kind of rocks in a nice bright way. <laughs> this is my, again, this is another guitar that I use with Delirious. Uh, it's Fender Strat. It's like 78, 79 around there. It's got the big head stock and uh, Bill Lawrence pickups. This is one of the best sounding guitars I have actually. So uh, it's quite incredible, but uh, yeah, so I've got that as well. These pickups are a little more kind of like punchy and mid. Uh, they have a bit more mid power than the than the Sir does. Um, and I kind of like that, so I'm looking to kind of swap them out. My acoustic, because uh, we're doing a, an acoustic set in this. Um, this is a small body Taylor Grand Concert um, with a classic headstock, which I love. Um, this guitar sounds amazing. I'm using, uh, on all my guitars I use Daddario strings. These are Daddario uh, nickel bronze. And um, yeah, I just love the way this thing sounds like that. So yeah, they're the guitars I'm at, I've got out on this tour, um, including the Christmas shows that we're doing. I think we're gonna have like about 40 shows between now and and Christmas, so. 40 shows. Yeah, roughly, yeah. Wow, yeah, so. Massive. Uh, yeah. So as you guys can see, this is the Stoogie Mothership. Tell us about the spaceship that you have, Stu. Yeah, so uh, at the center of it all is my Gig Rig G2 switcher. I've used Gig Rig ever since they started, actually. Um, I used to have the little MIDI, MIDI 8 or MIDI 6, or whatever it's called, but. Uh, uh, so yeah, so that's this, this kind of brains and everything kind of switches from there um, and uh, so I have a, a, a buffer under here that I plug straight into and then it's split and it goes to my tuner so that there's no uh, tone suck on the tuner. Um, comes in here and then got my compressor. I see uh, you love your JHS stuff as well. Yeah, this is version 4 which I think is an amazing circuit so uh, I love this pedal. And then uh, my full drive, trusted full drive, uh, and my kilt, uh, which I can, if you uh, notice here, I can, um, I can, I can switch that. Here we go. So it goes from uh, from uh, from overdrive to fuzz. So that's pretty much acting as a red remote. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then I've got this iron horse, um, which is kind of. So normally I'd have a fuzz as well as my kilt. Um, and, but the reason I've got this iron horse, it's kind of like a rat-ish type pedal. And, uh, um, and, and, and really that's for that, the kind of Dan Huff solos that I play uh, with Michael from the 90s. Then it gets into the fun stuff. So I've got this Julia chorus and I've got this uh, the Pink Panther, but it's really the Lucky Cat delay from JHS. Lucky Cats. Yeah. Pitchfork for the high octave stuff, and then two H9s. One of them, uh, this one here, is all pretty much reverbs and choruses and uh, tremolo type stuff, and then this is all delay. I use the Salem Quartz Timer uh, for all my have all the songs programmed in um, and that, that keeps everything in time. So and going out, does it have a buffered split going into your amps? So um, it's all done from here, so from the G2, these are the, these are the two outputs and um, yeah, so I, they are buffered, they are, they are isolated um, and uh, you can flip the phase on, uh, on output two if you want to. So out from the G2 into your amp rig, I'm yes. guessing. So my uh, third power rig, uh, this is my own signature amp with them, uh, the Majestic 40, uh, which is based around the sound of my park. And then this is a dual citizen. I'm using the 
AC30 side of this uh, to go in, in pairs with that. So this one's on the left, over there, and then uh, the AC30 is on the right there. So, and that, you know, I started using two amps not for a stereo thing, but for like um, just a blend. And uh, and then so the happy accident is when you throw a stereo effect on it, it just goes nice and wide. So. Uh, so, and these are actually my own microphones. Uh, these are NOS Panthers uh, ribbon mics. NOS Panther ribbon mics. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. And so, that's Stoogie's rig. Yeah, there we go. your basses. That's a good place to start, I think. Uh, this is an FGN uh, Express MJ. Just got this back uh, this summer. Really well-built bass um, made by uh, a factory in Japan that apparently did some other work for some high-profile makers, which are sort of not be named, but uh, anyway. Really, really great bass and uh, jazz bass style. Uh, this right here just a good old Fender P bass American Vintage reissue from about 2005, so it's nice and broken in. Aged Olympic white. Uh, just, you know, just that nice P pickup that just sits right, right up front there and translates everything that your fingers do. Actually, this I've only had a few days, so, but it's, it's almost 20 years old, so it's already been broken in by someone else. Uh, Lakeland 5594, I guess, and uh, so just just getting used to this again. Haven't had a five in a little while, so it's kind of a, a chance to just uh, stretch myself a little bit. Um, so there you go, and it was Shoreline Gold. So I that don't know. is a beautiful color. I love the color. So yeah, it's it's already got some dings in it, so I don't have to worry about dinging it up. Which I kind of like that. Uh, over here, if you'll pardon the mess, is a. Uh, a Mesa Boogie, uh, this is the, the new WD-800 that just, I think this just came out pretty recently. I've used uh, and loved the Subway Series Mesa Boogie combo for years. I've had that for several years and loved it. And apparently this was sort of their, um, uh, they, they were inspired by that amp to kind of bring some of the to uh, topology to this to this one. So D-Class amp with a tube preamp. And how many watts are you running it with? Uh, it's an 800 watt D-Class amp, so very light, but a lot of power. And uh, and then a powerhouse 410 cabinet, which they no longer make, so that makes it even cooler, doesn't it? Yeah. And are you running a <laughs> DI, or are you blending no, it with a mic? Both. We're doing both, and I'm not sure what um, what David's doing up front, but I know he, he really loves the DI tone coming off, and he just we're just getting going with the mic today, so um, I think he just really likes how it sounded. And, we are going to just see what happens. I don't know what will make the mix, but... Yeah. Uh, over here, just, just got this yesterday. I had to get this last minute because Michael uh, just threw the idea of an acoustic set a few days ago. So uh, a friend of mine recommended this Guild Jumbo Junior bass and really blew me away. Uh, Look at that maple on the side. Yeah, really it's nice gorgeous. solid spruce top, uh, laminate back and sides, but nice, nice job on the figuring. And then and it's a rounded back, but... Tell you what, the, the plugged in tone really blew me away. The Paizo, apparently, they spent about two years developing this and they even had to wait to get Diodario to, to make some special strings that are very low tension. But the tone just pours out of it. I'm really, really impressed with this. Um, so that's that's new and just get me know that. But but we, we pulled it up in front of house and our sound guy just he didn't have to do anything to it. He was used to tweaking acoustic bass guitars and having to notch things out. He just pulled it up and went, wow. So, Definitely uh, pedal board? Yes, let's um, do the pedal board. Kind of this is sort of being I'm just kind of reconfiguring things today, but 
Uh, this is like I don't leave home without it. The, the VT, I love it. Sands out, made by Tech Tony One. Just got this. It's a bass mid control, so I like to use it just to bump up an upper mid range frequency on the Lakeland. I've only been using that a couple days, but that's why I bought it, and I, I really dig it so far. Just a Sonic Research tuner, great tuner. I go our optimizer, super, super solid. Octopedal, and this is awesome. Best, best stomp buck com compressor I've ever had, uh, the Cali 76 Bass Compact. Um, and I, I even had the large format one, and I'm blown away by this one. So, yeah, there you go. Nothing too complex, but uh, just like to keep it simple and play some bass. And that's the bass rig, guys. Thank right you so much. My pleasure. Hey guys, Jim Daniker. I uh, play keys for Michael for 20, gosh, 24 years next month. Um, so I kind of drive the show. My, I guess my title is musical director, band leader, um, which in our organization doesn't mean a whole lot other than I'm the guy that puts all the tracks together and stems and clicks and stuff for video and, and gets everybody the material. And so it's, it's a big job, but it's a lot of fun. So here we are. Um, I just use two controllers. Um, I don't pull any sounds from these. Um, although, for a long time, I did use the piano sound, the uh, Yamaha CP300. This is um, by far my favorite digital piano on the market. This is what Michael and I have used for, gosh, about 10 years now. And before that, it was the P300, which was the predecessor to this, which goes back to the mid-90s. Um, I like this Roland keyboard, it's a VR730. This is exclusively what I use for my um, my Hammond B3 because it's got waterfall keys, it plays like a Hammond, you can you know do palm smears and all that kind of stuff. And of course it has real drawbar controls, um, which I put on the iPad controller for Backstage Pass, I can do it here as well. but. Man, when you're playing like a Rock B3 thing, it's a lot harder to reach over and you actually have to look at what you're doing. Whereas on this guy, I can just grab draw bars and go fast and not worry about, am I hitting the right thing? Feels that, organic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, this is great if you don't have a real draw bar controller. Um, but man, there's nothing like having, you know, real faders to grab. As far as everything else, my pedal board, um, just a good old Roland DP-10, which is by far my favorite sustain pedal. It's very, very heavy duty, and um, yeah, they last forever. And Yamaha FC-7, uh, I've got two of them. One is just a spare. Um, once in a while, I'll hook it up if I want to do the custom string stuff that's in the backstage pass. But um, I generally just use expression, and, um, and then the other is just a spare in case this ever goes down, because I really rely on my expression pedal. I use it all the time. Um, everything else, um, I've got a USB hub that my controllers are plugged into and in my iPad so it can get uh, power from that and also connects directly to the computer through my snake. So, um, what yeah. about your keto? <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> well, I swore I would never do it, but this guy, I just picked this up over the weekend. It's brand new from Yamaha. It's called the, what's it called? Sonogenic. And then, let's see, let me turn this guy on. So I've found, I had an old iPhone in a drawer that fits perfectly on this spot. So I set this up with just a handful, eight different patches I can call up on it, and then an expression control while I'm playing. I'm just using this in, essentially as an accordion. We, we, we do a little acoustic set in the middle of this show, and um, but I'm just gonna call up a couple sounds and see what happens. I might do a couple synth solos on it. Um, I don't know, I don't know how I feel about the guitar yet. I swore I would never do it, so I'm kind of breaking my own rule. But it, it's kind of cool. I mean, it's, it's very light. Um, and for having, it's kind of three quarter size keys, they're not totally mini, so it's actually pretty playable. It's got velocity sensitive keys that feel pretty good. They're the same keys as on the little Reface series that Yamaha makes. Um, but the, the other cool thing I like about this is I can use it in the hotel room for just working with my laptop. It's a nice mobile controller, so, and it's Bluetooth. So I can run around, I don't have any cables attached to it. It talks to Backstage Pass from, I might go visit Stu G on the other side of the stage and have a little fun with him. And I don't have to worry about cables. So yeah, so we'll see.
And where can people find Backstage Pass? It is on my website. It's just www.jimdaneker.com. It's uh, J-I-M-D-A-N-E-K-E-R.com. That's yeah. Keysland. That's Keysland. That's Keysland with yeah. Jim Daneker. Hey guys, my name is Chris Lidecker. I play drums with Michael W. Smith, and uh, here's here's my gear. So I'm playing Yamaha shells. It's a they're all birch shells. Uh, I kind of like the the birch thing. Um, is it the stage custom that you're using? Yeah, sorry, it's a stage custom birch 10, 12, 14, 16, and a 20 inch kick. A 20 inch kick. A 20 inch kick. Wow, not right. 22 or 24. Nope. Nice and punchy. Um, I keep. I, part of the reason why I like the birch shells is because it kind of keeps it a little tight and punchy and I like to play toms um, so you know the, the birch thing allows you to be a little more rhythmic without everything getting too cloudy and kind of blending together um, and then it's a Yamaha steel shell snare drum and what's the dimensions of it uh, 14 by f- five five and a half I'm not <laughs> I gotta admit I'm not like a gear head, so sometimes I forget dimensions and stuff. I just know if I like how it sounds. That's great. That's that's what all so, that matters, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so cool. Um, and um, let's talk about your symbols. Yeah. I can see they're all Istanbul agop. Yes, they are Istanbul agop. Yeah, my favorite symbols too. Hands down, my favorite symbols. Um, so I've got a kind of a mixture. They I have a mixture of the exist line, the traditional line, and these are some home uh, hi hats. Oh yeah. Um, this is like the the Cindy Blackman line, if you know about the Istanbul situation. So um, the traditional ones are a little more washy. They're a little more thin. So I've got a crash here and a, a ride over here. And then the exist ones tend to be like a little brighter and a little heavier. Um, and so the fun thing about playing with Michael is that we do a mixture of his pop music and worship music and so I tend to stay on the brighter ones a little bit more during the pop stuff and the washy ones a little bit more during the worship stuff. So Istanbul has like everything, every sound you can imagine and this is just like a small selection of their line but I love the symbol. That's what I that's what I got. Cool. And um, I see you're running SPDSX there? Yes, I am. Um, so just a variety of things, some kicks, snares for some of the pop stuff when we do kind of electronic-y sounded things, and then some really like verbed out claps, tambourines, snaps, things like that. Just just the accents. It's just like the, the little dust on top. You know what I mean? I play pretty much the kit like 98% of the time and then I'm adding in little things over here. Uh, awesome. So, yeah, the SPD FX makes it pretty easy. And little extras, Remo heads I see? Yes. And Vic Firth sticks? Yes. Vic Firth is the... I don't have a deal with anyone except Vic Firth. Um, they're my favorite six and I managed um, to get like an endorsement deal with them. But all the other stuff um, I have just because I love it. Just like the reason I was always playing Vic Firth sticks. Um, I just love it. I love what I have and I love these sounds. And so I'm going to keep playing them whether or not I ever have a deal with these companies. So. Awesome. Thanks so much, Chris. Thank you.